The claim that's coming out of Washington that there is no disagreement on this issue couldn't be further from the truth. To parents of transgender children, affirming your child's identity is one of the most powerful things you can do to keep them safe and healthy. There is no consensus among professionals and experts. There is a debate that's going on, but Washington is not acknowledging the voices that are on the other side. They are silencing us. They are acting like we don't exist. My message to them is we do exist and we're not going anywhere. Kids are in the driver's seat. Whatever identity that they have chosen, their parents, their teachers, their doctors, their therapist, is required to accept that. Many of these kids have other issues going on. Okay, they have what's called comorbidities. So aside from the gender confusion that they may have, they also might be anxious or depressed or on the autistic spectrum. Of great concern is the fact that at many gender clinics and, and, and other professionals' offices, even if they're not within a gender clinic, but so-called gender experts may not be sufficiently exploring those things. It's critical to be looking at those other issues that they have and not just to be automatically putting them onto an assembly line, the transgender assembly line, that this is your, this is what's going on with you. You need to be socially affirmed. You need to go in the direction of hormones possibly. And then that gets into all the other medicalization. The eligibility for getting gender affirming surgeries at Boston Children's Hospital is basically the same as it would be for most other hospitals or surgeons in the United States. Many surgical centers require you to be 18. At Boston Children's Hospital for top surgeries, we'll see people as young as age 15 if they've been affirmed in their gender for a long period of time and don't really have any other life complications that make surgery inappropriate. These professionals have the arrogance, really, I, I have to call it arrogance, to, to tell parents that they don't know their child, they know better, after meeting with their child for a half an hour or 45 minutes, or even three or four times, they know better than the parents do, and the parents better get with the program, because they're the ones that are gonna harm their child. Now that's pretty traumatic for parents to hear. And then they go home in shock and they might talk to a friend or a relative and sometimes that friend or relative will agree and say, well, well I heard, you know, well, you know this, is what, this is what the president says, this is what Dr. Rachel Levine is saying, so you're closed-minded, you got to be more open-minded. And the parent realizes that they're, they're isolated. They're, they have no support. The child is focused on what they want at the moment. And what they want at that moment so much is to be a guy, to be a girl, because they have the idea that when they go into this new identity, they'll be able to leave their problems behind. Life will be better. In no other field of medicine would we put the child in a position of making medical decisions. And yet that is, that is actually what's happening. Only affirming treatment has the approval of mental health organizations. We know from earlier studies from the kids that develop gender dysphoria when they're four years old, six years old, before puberty, that an average of 80% when they go through natural puberty they 
reach a point of acceptance of their bodies. They don't need the hormones and the surgeries. That's a piece of information that, that my colleagues are not giving parents and are not giving kids. It's malfeasance. The transgender path is a difficult path and it's a path of many lifelong appointments with doctors. Once you are on puberty blockers, there's a close to 100% chance, 98% chance, that after those puberty blockers, you will go on to cross-sex hormones. And the cross-sex hormones are going to cause irreversible physical changes, and they're going to make reproduction impossible. They're going to sterilize the child. And we have to recognize this path. People change, and certainly kids change, and certainly adolescence, normal puberty causes massive changes, not only physically, but emotionally and cognitively, allow that child to go through normal puberty. We want to try and put children on a path in which they will have less doctor's appointments in their lives, not more. There's an unwritten understanding that intelligent, informed, educated people will hold certain views. And one of those views is the trans ideology. People who question, people who challenge, are marginalized or worse. People want to keep their jobs. People want their careers. And I'm sad to say that a lot of my colleagues really are lacking in the area of courage. Listen, you have to do what's right. I know too much to not do anything about this. I know what kids are going through. I know that 13-year-old girls are having their breasts removed. Uh, minor boys are being castrated. We can't accept it and we can't be complicit in the lie by staying silent.